Uh, end game, guys. New end game. Let's go. Adjustments to uh, to world tiers, and that we've changed world the tier five. That you get for opting into certain world tiers. So, uh, I'm gonna, so the reason why we're doing this, we want we want to get players to end game a little bit faster. So we've made an adjustment where world tier two now goes instead of getting you 20% bonus XP, it gives you 50% bonus XP. Oh, it's more than uh, double. World tier three now gives you 150% uh, bonus XP as opposed to the 100% you got before, and then world tier four gives you 250% bonus XP instead of the 200% that you got before. Okay. So again, we want to get players into the space where they're, they're getting a chance to play with these new items, they're getting a chance to see some of the new content we're going to be talking about in just a minute, uh, and experience more of the end game, and, uh, ha and have a little less uh, emphasis on the, the level up process uh, being like a, a lot longer as it, as it is today. So uh, this is, this is our, our stated intent. We want more players to be able to reach level 100. We want them to get more of these, uh, these level 100 9, I, 925 items. We want them to start seeing more greater affixes. We want them to engage in tempering and masterworking. We want them to see everything else the game has yeah. to offer. Uh, we want to make sure that we're removing some of the restrictions and making that possible. And we're continuing to think about that as we move forward. This is just all of the things we're talking about today are just one more step on the journey of Diablo 4. We're going to continue, as Adam already called out, to continue to make the game better based on feedback and just continue yeah. to add more cool stuff that, uh, that we think is great for the game and that also that we're, we're hearing from our player base, our community, would be really, really great for the game experience. So, uh, with that quick little thing out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the Ooh, first the new end game. Plan, uh, that you get a chance to see okay, on PTR. let's see. And that is we made a, a significant update to Helltide. Now, I, I think that everyone will Whoa, remember- it appears one and two. Three, we made an adjustment to Helltide timing where now they're basically up for 55 minutes out of every hour. There's a five minute gap between each hell type. It's basically minutes. always up. You know, and we think that that's great. Players are able to get uh, better a better access threat to meter. Souls and, uh, and, and, other, and all the gameplay there. But a we also, board. like looking back on season two uh, and you know, the, uh, the, the blood harvest regions where uh, you know, the armies of Lord Zir were marching across sanctuary as we all re recall from <laughs> quarter four of last year and you know capturing people and draining them of blood uh, oh so new boss you know, a was, blood maiden really right that's new genetic, uh, like social experience in the overworld like it's just a, a blast kind of go through Screen kill vampires save people uh and uh, and summon blood seekers as well along the way and getting good rewards as you go it's it was just a it was a fun experience in season three we had a different take on that idea with the, with the form of arcane tremors where players can go and engage in a number of different like, small activities and traps and, uh, and also uh, managed to, uh, to summon Heralds of Malthus in a group and go ahead and get more like tuning stones and more uh, uh, and, and, and governing stones uh, and continue to like just get more rewards uh, from that experience. And again, we thought that was pretty fun, right? Mm -hmm. So and take, to until you get the duplicates, man. Helltide. And I'll, I'll be, I'll be uh, actually, I think it might be even easier if we, if we could just throw to Ruben potentially, who I think might actually be able to be in Helltide right now. Yeah. Uh, this is the new so Helltide. Oh, look at the top right, guys. Some of these ideas back to the Helltide. new Helltide. <laughs> Hello, yes, you're being, you're going to get destroyed. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yeah, we want to take some of these ideas back to Helltide and make sure that the, the our overworld, exciting, demonic invasion. They're doing a lot, guys. Get to go through here is it's just good. more fun to, uh, to, to engage with. Was that yeah. just a giant hellworm belching a bunch of enemies at? Ruben? That was that was a giant hellworm <laughs> belching a bunch okay. of enemies up. It's cool. So a, a bunch of things have changed. So one of the things <laughs> that oh, let me let me dive in. So one of the, one of the things that we uh, that we, we did is we add this new idea of a threat system. Now you'll see the eagle-eyed among you uh, can look to the left of the mini map. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, can look to the left <laughs> of the mini map, and you'll see a horizontal bar it's segmented in three pieces uh, next to that kind of like half-completed pentagram there. Uh, as the players are killing demons in Helltide areas, they are slowly growing their threat over the course of the experience. And as they do that, they're going to find like more uh, like ambushes. They're going to find more uh, creatures trying, uh, coming and trying to kill them as they uh, as they kind of like roll through the space. And this, they're earning, they're gaining threat by doing anything. If they're opening tortured gifts, if they are killing like regular monsters and elites, you know, they're they're always earning more threat for the things that they do. The the armies of hell are paying more attention. So as the player is going to yeah, go through the process, they are going to feel, start feeling a new boss. pressure as they go through the experience. Now, I want to see how hard the boss is. Once the player is. has gotten towards the, like, the end of this, like they actually have, uh, you know, when the armies of hell have been fully alerted, you know, you'll hear a tone, which I think that, uh, I think we might actually hear soon, potentially. Well, I guess we'll have to see. I see it on but the mini-map. You'll hear a tone alerting you to the, uh, the fact that the armies of hell are basically coming for your blood, right? They're, they're coming for you at this time. And what they, in that case, you're going to see that there's going to be a new creature type that's going to appear, uh, which we'll uh, be able to get to in just a second. Some of the other big changes that are happening in uh, Helltide alongside this, while we kind of wait for some of this stuff to happen, 
is uh, we're, we have reduced the uh, the level requirement or the world tier requirement for Helltides. You'll you do world tier one and in, two uh, in lower right? world tiers now, so they're they're in, in a, a great way for oh. level up. Uh, okay, it looks like the forces of hell have been alerted. Okay. So now there's going to be like it's, it's going to be a little, a little almost so a little more of a holdout. Two, two elites come out. And ambushes is that it? Start to occur at this time. You know, and uh, it's going to have a, a, a kind of a cap off event towards the end. We'll talk about it as it arrives. But you can see right now okay. the threat is draining while this uh, this. Uh, oh, okay. And then something else comes. Out. Okay, good, good, good. Maximum threshold. You know, the the, the 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 minions of hell are coming for you. Uh, you are, you know, you're going to be, um, you know, kind of fighting pretty hard for this stuff. But it's a great way to get like X to a lot of elites. You know, once this bar is all is drained once again, you can start building it up by again going out doing more things inside the Helltide experience. Uh, you're going to get more opportunities for more senders and more of these ambushes again as the uh, as as time goes on. Looks like we're getting towards the uh, the end of this now. I want to see some boss? Oh, there it is. There's the new yeah. boss. This uh, going to come out here. Yeah. This is, uh, so yes. So yes. Is this so now uh, uh, one of the Hellborn has managed to appear. Uh, Hellborn are are they're very much a uh, a similar creature to some of the uh, the blood seekers that we've seen in the past. These are adventurers who have fallen to the uh, to the the depravities of hell. They're now cool. serving the uh, their his, their infernal masters. Uh, they have great drops, like they'll drop. Uh, it's like a rogue exile. Uh, and uh, they will also drop uh, summoning materials for Lord Zir uh, moving mm -hmm. forward. So there's Good. more ways for you to get some of those mats as you go through the experience. Yeah, Zir. And that's Zir's actually kind one of, of the other things that we did as, uh, for, like, as getting part mats. of uh, our, our general updates. We, we kind of wanted to go through and do a pass to make it easier to find more of those those boss summoning materials, like from doing like different kinds of content. So while obviously you can go to Hell Tides and open Tortured Gifts to get Living Steel pretty quickly, we, we want to make sure that there's, like, if you find, like, a tr Treasure Goblin, there's a chance now that Treasure Goblin could drop a random boss summoning mm -hmm. material. Oh. You know, okay. when you go and you open Bounty Caches, or uh, Whisper Caches at the end of a, uh, a, a bunch of Whispers runs, like, in that situation, you'll also get a chance of getting random boss summoning material. You know, and we find more opportunities through different parts of the experience in, like, local events. Like, when you're going and just finding events and you manage to complete the mastery objective of an event now, there's a chance for you to get a boss summoning material there. You know, uh, even elites have a very, very low chance uh, to draw uh, to drop some of these materials. And again, all to make it just a little bit easier to kind of like gain access to these bosses as you're leveling up and playing. Even if you're not saying saying specifically in just Nightmare Dungeons to get Distilled Fear or something else, right? Um, so yeah, that's I mean, those I think those are going to be some pretty fun updates for the players. That's uh, obviously that's pretty not exciting. everything. It's good, man. So, we, uh, <laughs> so another thing that we're doing as part of this is that we are adding a new we're adding a new boss. Uh, new boss. Ooh, okay. Adding, new uh, new boss. So oh. uh, you can now fight Andariel. Uh, she is summonable by defeating uh, the beasts in ice and, and Lord Zir. I want like a, an actual new boss, Andariel. but maybe so it'll be completely sure reworked though. A couple different ways to kind of gain access to these really really powerful. Next season, Ashroth. But like, I, I want a new things. boss. So you know, always requiring players to go back to those same places. So between opening up the options of how you gain access to materials you can use to go farm Uber Uniques a little bit earlier, uh, to like now saying, hey, go do Nightmare Dungeons, go do some of this overworld content and Helltide content to gain access to Beast and Ice in Lord Zir, so you can go farm Andariel there. We think that's going to be like a really, really fun change. Uh, and uh, Andariel is a really cool fight. I think we might actually have like a quick little yeah. shot oh, of the summon. The new Andariel. Okay, as long as it's as brand we all new. Know her and love her. There oh, she is. is. Wow. She's I'm back. Shut that. She's tough. You know, it's uh, it's it's gonna be. I want to say the fun. fight's been updated too. Yeah, okay, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, yeah, that's all that matters. Is, yeah, the, as long uh, as it's not the same boss. Very excited about this fight and very excited about Endariel for a while, bringing her back into the uh, into the equation. So yeah, she's gonna be a lot of fun to summon. So now she drops the same thing as Doriel. Yeah. I wish they made it so this was like double or quadruple, or ten okay, times the drop is Doriel. All right, yeah. We're on a timer, people. Okay, I got things to talk about still. Uh, okay. Okay, but that's not even all the things that we're changing with regards to, to bosses. There's mm. there's more stuff that we're doing as well. Uh, okay. So one of the things that we're going to be right. talking about in a minute is, uh, is a new feature called the pit. And inside the pit, you can be able to, you're going to be earning Stygian stones. You'll be able to use to summon higher level versions of all of these bosses as you go deeper into the experience. So we think this is, ex this is extremely exciting. Yeah, you get the Stygian boss. <laughs> a, uh, another way for players to be able to like, express their, like, their build strength and going and fighting these bosses uh, are gonna provide much, much greater rewards. In fact, when you kill one of these new, very, very powerful, tormented versions of these bosses uh, out there, uh, they are gonna give you, a, uh, they're gonna give you one uh, resplendent spark the first time you kill any of them. Guaranteed so, uh, like, uber the, unique the you can like summon. part. First time you kill one of them, you're one out of four. Spark for you to use in the future. Cool, cool, cool. Now, 
And that is not all that we're doing, obviously. I mentioned the pit. <laughs> That's so if we could just go ahead and, uh, well, I guess we'll, I guess we can talk about it. I can speak to it, actually, yeah. yeah. So we've been getting a lot of feedback uh, from like our experience with, uh, with the Avatar of Zir. You know, so uh, you know, the, towards the end of season two, we had this like really, really difficult like dungeon dive. We were going against, against again forces of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Lord Zir uh, inside this uh, this uh, experience and fighting blood seekers and, and kind of racing the clock. And when that was a that was a pretty fun experience. Uh, we got a lot of really good information and feedback about how that really played out. We made a number of adjustments in the form of this new content type that we're calling uh, the Artificer's Pit. And what it effectively is is a way for players to go and. Um, they're, like once players have, have uh, managed to complete a, a tier 45 nightmare dungeon, which is filled with like level 100 monsters, they're going to gain access to a quest that's going to like send them around the world looking for rune shards. And rune shards are just this new material that players will collect to open up uh, Artificer's Rifts. And they drop mm. from elite creatures, they drop all over the place. Like it's pretty easy to find you know, the materials you'll need to start this process. Uh, and when you have a number of them, you can bring them back to this obelisk in Karagar, and kind of use that to like form a, uh, a your first pit run effectively, uh, and there there's hundreds of levels of this, and the monsters that you will begin fighting immediately are all like right at level 100. Do we have a, uh, we have a video? Yeah, show or, show, or, show us yeah, the yeah, gameplay. Yeah, so we, we have a uh, Ruben like kind of near live, there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. we have the live play <laughs> with that awesome debug. Text. Yeah, there it Dungeon is. Dungeon end game. Awesome debug text. Everybody. PTR, okay. look forward, and it's a, we're looking at talking okay. about this right ooh. now. This is what it looks like sometimes. Arfus is too, so, oh, so it's like okay. greater rift. So, I've never seen this, this is new to me too. He's already done uh, the, the rift before. He's gonna go ahead and just open up a tier one uh, artificer's rift, and just we'll see how this goes. So he's gonna spend one rune shard to do this. So it costs rune shards. Right here in Kyrgar, um, and we're gonna go, there's, like, there's a little bit of a stacking issue there. Yeah, we're gonna have that fixed too. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that feedback, everybody. Uh, and you're going to dive into your first pit run. Now, uh, each pit experience is it's a it's a randomized layout filled with random monsters. You know, uh, there's no nightmare affixes. Like so this is the new in, pit, uh, like afflictions, like we have in uh, in nightmare dungeons. Instead, uh, so it's a greater rift. You're, you're timed, okay? As, uh, against so the timer it's just like a and, uh, trying to a greater it. rift. So as you're going through this, you'll see it's very very similar to a lot of the things that we did in the Avatar Zir. Now we want to make sure that this is a, a quick, punchy experience as you're playing and you're killing monsters. You're not going to be getting any. I mean, this looks like the box, first like, uh, gauntlet like level, right? Down. Like the same tile you know, set. It's about like pushing as hard as you can. Now, a couple of the major differences between what we've done in uh, the Artificer's Pit uh, relative to what we did in the Abattoir of Zir is first, uh, in in the Abattoir of Zir, when a player died uh, while going through the experience, they were immediately ejected from the Abattoir of Zir. Like their run was over uh, in the case of death. Here, uh, we want thirty to seconds a penalty. More, uh, a few more uh, problems to occur, a few more errors, you know, from the player as they're kind of going through. Uh, so that every time you, you die, what actually ends up happening is you add thirty seconds to your timer. Uh, so you're you, you're less and less likely to beat the timer, and that's important. At the end of the timer, you're not ejected from the pit. Like if you if you don't actually manage to keep time with the timer, you just don't get the mastery objective completion. And the mastery is tied to masterworking materials that you'll be using to go through the masterworking process for your items. Oh, fact, so this is how you the get pit, as Charles referenced earlier, the mastery. Is the place you need to go in order to obtain the bulk majority of those masterworking materials. Ah, okay. So while you so the, this is for the itemization. You will get rewards for having defeated the boss by the uh, by the end of a pit run if you don't manage to finish the, with the timer in mind. You won't get access to those materials. So why is this? So. One of the things we recognize we, that we think is very unique to Diablo uh, and, and to SARPGs in general is that a lot of times players are making uh, like efficiency bets about how they choose to engage with content. They're deciding, okay, I, I can kill monsters of this level fairly easily and without much risk. How much further beyond this level can I push in order to maximize the rewards I'm getting from the, uh, from, uh, the runs that I'm doing uh, and while also uh, like maintaining good cadence and like managing my risk? And that's kind of like that. that Got to kill that one with an up arrow first. Really, really well. You know, AOZ was meant to like tap into there a little bit of this. We went. It was also, AOZ was designed to be an extraordinarily challenging piece of content from the get go. Here, the pit starts in a somewhat more reasonable place. I think we understand that, like you know, tier uh, like tier forty five nightmare dungeons are not you know uh, the most challenging content in the entirety of the game. It's, it goes up much higher than that, and the pit does as well as the pit can go like well past uh, tier 100, so you can be fighting level 200 monsters, level 250 monsters as you go deeper and deeper into the experience. So, okay, it looks like uh, Ruben's making pretty good time going through this. 
I think we saw earlier that Ruben actually like jumped into a portal to move to a different area. Yep. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't finish an entire uh, pit run inside like that first that first area. Uh, you kind of are expected to like move on, but um, you also don't need to kill everything. Yeah, it's uh, just like a, a rift. You, you go areas. deeper and deeper down. A good amount of creatures in both spaces. You can kind of like make up the time that you need. But yeah, this is season four. Here, it's not out yet. Okay. So the idea is to try and find that level in the pit where you can go pretty efficiently and quickly, but where you're pushing hard so you can get better rewards. Right. right. Okay. So uh, Ruben did a great, great job, Ruben. Uh, so you managed to, you managed to do it. Okay. Let's not get too excited. All right, so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So now he's gonna go. He's gonna okay, go and cool. he's gonna fight the uh, the boss in just a moment. Oh, so is there a new now, boss? The, the second thing is different about the uh, outlaw sharpshooter that, uh, that we is that new. Uh, you just huh? start to see it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there's different from what we've done in uh, in AOZ in the past is that occasionally during a pit run, oh. you're going to be confronted by another major boss or villain uh, that you've seen. Like you'll see their echo occasionally appear just for a moment to perform a big attack, a uh, big sweeping attack, in, or that you're going to have to like avoid or deal with while you're dealing with the, uh, the, the boss. You're already Pop flame show and is so easy. This is happening throughout the duration of the pit as well. You know? And as you go deeper, you'll see this occasionally a little more frequently at the same time. So these are just another complication, like another another thing that you're going to be thinking about while you're playing and trying to like remember the sorts of patterns. Eventually, you'll fight. You'll, you'll see a couple of these appearing as well. You know, oh, so you can fight a couple at that, the same uh, time. That, kind of pattern that would actually be quite deeper difficult. Deeper deeper into the if you fight like three of these at the same time. So it's kind of like Elias, right, what, ooh, Francis, okay. Like a, a, a shade of Elias kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. come and do an attack. Just do an attack in the middle. A shade of Warp. Yeah, yeah. A shade of Warp can also appear, which is pretty These are these are definitely tough, like tough things as you go deeper and deeper, and eventually you'll. Tough things. All right, we're building the one shot build, boys. Okay, so here. <laughs> We've been the boss. Got a number of different drops. There's a there's a bug in this in this version that we're looking at right now, where the okay. items are dropping are not actually Does ancestral. That but that's not the case when players are oh, okay. playing the PTR. Okay. You all see ancestral items as the rewards for killing the boss here at the end. And then after that, uh, when you open the chest, you're gonna see that there's a bunch of obdusite that popped out of it, which is a a master working material. You know, I, think okay. got, I think he got five, you know, from the... Well, he's got a, a couple of Splendid Sparks. So, as you go deeper in the pit, there's basically three tiers of masterworking materials that you're going to be able to earn through. So, there's the uh, there's the Obdicite, there's the Inglith, and then there is the, yeah, the Neath Iron. Uh, so, these are available as you go deeper and deeper into the pit experience. He's got a bunch, though. Like, he's got like 400. 20. You know, you'll be getting, uh, like, amounts wonder of... wonder if these are actually going to be rare. Like, 21 to 40... You get amounts of Inglith, and as you yeah. go to Neath Iron and beyond, mm -hmm. as you go into like you know uh, like forty and beyond, you're starting seeing more and more Neath Iron. Forty, Neath so it, there's at least be, forty like, tiers of, of this. Materials if you need them for resetting a masterwork item and starting at a, at a lower level. So you don't yeah. have to go back to the low level. No, you can no, no, stay no. at the higher. You, you can stay at a higher level. Sure. Yeah. But to be clear, if you want to get to that rank twelve masterwork, the really the best possible items, you do need to be pushing deeper levels of the pit. You yeah, can't just yeah. continually farm level one. You, you want to push to that efficiency bet that you said. Yeah. Push yourself to your limit mm -hmm. to get the most materials it, per hour and just you know really fight that hard content to get the best items. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So yeah, if you want to go through that process and like really get those really be the best items available for your build, uh, you're going to want to go through the master working It's going to be really hard to make multiple Probably classes, though. Once. That's one thing that I see as a problem right, to get the absolute for some people. Very, very best items. You know, so we think the pit's gonna be—it's a really fun experience. It is—it's—it's uh, it's very extendable, so it goes—it goes pretty deep for players. And again, as you're going, you're getting these Stygian stones as you play. You know, like as you get deeper into the experience, you're gonna get those. Uh, you're gonna—you're gonna get the, uh, the ability to go fight those those level 200 tormented versions of these bosses. So like a level 200 uh, tormented. Oh, you go up to level 200. Holy, that's. All of these uh, bosses have a, a, a higher chance to drop. Uh, uh, so this is the new. Well. Hardest so endgame content, really level two hundred. These uh, these creatures on farm, and they have they have better drops. They have a they have they more prolific in terms of the drops. The drop. I can't wait to see it, man. Uh, as you're going through this, so there's uh these are gonna be huge huge challenges for uh, for players to go and try to chase again just in season four. Yeah. You know, so there's that's that's like the 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 current look of some of the things we're working on right now. It's looking good, uh, man. With, we're we're currently very excited about. Yeah. So <laughs> on the on, on the content side. Right? Yeah. We. I mean, <laughs> we. We're we're an hour and a half in of all the uh, content that we just walked through with with season four, uh, and as you know, Adam had mentioned earlier, you know, we haven't even gone through all the class updates. You guys will the actually hell? see that. <laughs> There's a lot more. Uh, you guys will actually see that. I want to see the unique. Oh, next week another one. No, it's kind of available uh, like a day or two after a campfire chat. Uh, I am asking the community if it's okay if we give it to you guys next week because the only reason why is that they're huge and we actually need to make sure that we get all the information in there. You guys will have it well before the PTR actually starts 
and we will actually have uh, a, a blog kind of going oh, through all yeah, the, the details. I want to see the, the new chat, uniques and stuff, well man. The giant list of patch notes for the PTR, yeah. which again will begin on April 2nd, run for a week uh, on PC Battle.net, and we'll have instructions of how to actually get into the PTR, download the clients, and everything. You literally just, as well. instead of clicking so, play, you just select like PTR. Uh, we it's always so end our campfire chats with a. All right, so QA. &A. So yeah. we do want to I'll record that separately a, if it's a, worth it, but right that now. is going so to be the new end game, guys. Yeah. What do you think of it? Let me know. Questions. Let me know, guys, right. down below what you think of the new end game. But that's going to wrap it up for this. And if you guys want to see more, subscribe if you're new here, and we'll definitely have more very soon.